Hey Busy Bees! I often get asked how I come up with recipes and how I film or take photos for my videos. Today I'm partnering with Chromebook to show you my recipe testing process, how I get my inspiration, how I style and shoot my photos, then uploading them on social. So you guys be sure to hit this like button and if this video gets mm, 150,000 views, I will do a behind the scenes for how we film our videos. So go ahead and share this and we'll go ahead and get started. So first things first, before I start with any kind of recipe development, I try to look for different um, inspirations. Usually I get my food inspirations from restaurants, going out, or even just on TV. Food Network is a huge source for me because I really look up to all of them. So for dishes that I'm not really familiar with, let's say Korean food, I love Korean food and I go to K-Town pretty much on a weekly basis. You guys always see me posting it on IG stories. Um, but I'm not an expert, so I like to go online and do my research. The three blogs that I usually refer to for Korean food are Mangchi, of course, Korean Bapsang, and Beyond Kimchi. Since I don't have a Korean mom teaching me the secrets and tips and tricks, I refer to these blogs which I love because they explain everything so well. From there, I'll try out their recipes and the thing is, is that they each have different ways of doing a single recipe, for example, this dunjang jjigae, which I'm about to make. I look at their ratios, I look at their ingredients, I look at their techniques, and then from there, I'll kind of come up with my own way of doing it. Um, it's nice because I can mash three together or however many recipes I look at, um, and then I come up with my own. So when I am cooking and testing the first time, I like using Google Docs because that's where I store and update all of my notes. Everything is saved on the cloud, it's safe and accessible anywhere. I'll test a recipe a few times before I kind of make it my own. This dunjang jjigae is pretty good, but I'm probably gonna work on it a few more times before it goes live or get posted to my own blog. To style food, it's not always about just pouring it into a bowl. There's kind of a science to it. Especially for soup, it could just kind of look like a gloopy mess and you don't see textures, you don't see what's in it because it's so watery. For this dunjang jjigae, I'm using this large earthenware bowl typical of what you would find in a Korean restaurant, but I will add all of the big chunks of tofu and potatoes in there first. I'll layer it up, make it look really tall in the bowl, and then I'll pour my soup in. I'm not gonna pour it in all the way, I'm barely gonna cover the ingredients inside so the tofu, the zucchinis and stuff will still show through. You wanna see colors and texture, that's like the key to any kind of food photography. And then of course, to garnish it and make it look super fresh, I'll add a sprinkle of green onions. This will add freshness and color to our bowl. Since this is also gonna be used as kind of a photo shoot for my Instagram page, I like to make accompanying dishes like this bibimbap. I layered the rice at the bottom, and then I added all of the panjans that I bought from the Korean market. This dish in particular is already super colorful, so I don't have to worry so much about it, but I like to show each of the components. It adds a lot of texture and a pop of color that's really important for any photograph. I'm very matchy-matchy, so I always make sure that the dishes also kind of complements the food. So orange and green goes together perfectly with this. Okay, I have my food all set up, and now it's time to shoot it outside. I like using natural light when I'm shooting my food photos. It just makes it look more real and colorful. So for our flat lay, I'm starting off with this board. I just bought a regular board at Lowe's and then I painted it pink. You can really use any neutral color you'd like, anything that would make your food pop. I'll lay it down on my table and then I have a piece of muslin here to create texture. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then how I like to do my flat lay is kind of put it into a diner's perspective. If I'm looking down at the photo, does it make sense? 
So I lay down my bibimbap first because it's the biggest bowl. It's also the most colorful, so usually in a photograph, your eyes will draw towards the most colorful dish. It's my centerpiece. And then I'll lay down our denjang jjigae. I'm sorry if I'm not saying it correctly. Denjang jjigae, denjang jjigae. Next, our side dishes. Here I have my kimchi and our gochujang sauce for the bibimbap. And then I'll just make little tiny adjustments. You don't want it too structured. You don't want it too perfect. It's just kind of like perfectly imperfect. This looks good. So now I start shooting. Emmeline is holding this diffuser to give us nice soft light. I take a few snaps from the top, so to do a flat lay. And then I'll look at the camera, make any little adjustments that I need to. And then for food, I always like taking food from a 45 degree angle. This shows a lot more of the texture. It gives it a kind of a closer look, an appealing look, because you really see the shine and the glisten in the food. Of course, when we're done shooting, this is when we eat the food. I never let food go to waste. Fast forward a few hours, Erisi's asleep and it's time for me to edit my photos. I usually do this at nighttime when I get a chance to catch up on all my work. I open up my Lightroom app on the Chromebook and I'm using it as a tablet this time. I upload my photos, choose the ones that I like best. I'm trying out a few different filters. My favorite ones to use are modern and vintage. Anything that adds a little bit of contrast to the photo is really nice. Then I'll tweak the exposure warm it up because my feed tends to go on the warm side, saturate the colors a little bit, and I think this is good enough for Instagram. From here, I can upload it directly onto my Instagram app. So it exports and automatically opens Instagram for me. This is kind of like a big mobile tablet computer. I love the fact that I have a keyboard here so I can just type in my caption. Another really fun feature is that I can go directly into my DMs and respond to your comments on this keyboard. I used to be so bad at replying to DMs because it took me forever to type out on my mobile. This keyboard is a game changer and I hope you guys have seen that I'm so much faster at replying to you. By the way, I've gone the whole day without charging my Chromebook. The battery lasts about 10 hours and it's light, compact, I can pretty much take it with me anywhere. It starts up in seconds and never slows me down. Let me know if you guys are interested in the Chromebook and if you wanna learn more, check out the link in the description box below. I'd love to know your photographing process, if you guys have any questions on any of the food styling that I did, um, pretty much any questions about social media and my process, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.